بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فيه آيات بينات مقام إبراهيم ومن دخله كان آمنا ولله على الناس حج البيت من استطاع إليه سبيلا ومن كفر فإن
done. So when when we are committing shirk and when we are not following the guidance, you know, then we are actually following something or someone. Right? So Allah is saying, if you don't follow the guidance, it means you are following shaitan. And shaitan is a complete adversary of Allah. Right? He said that he was a rebel. He rebels against the guidance of Allah. And in 45, he's saying, I fear for you, a punishment will overtake you mm. if you follow Satan. 46, parents, the father is saying, are you rejecting my God? If you do not stop, we will stone thee. You see? Mm. And 48, he's saying, I shall withdraw from you that which you call on, that udu min dunanai, besides Allah. And I shall make dua to Allah, and I shall call on Allah, and I shall not be of those who stop in serving Allah. So when he withdrew from them, and that which they served, besides Allah, 49, oh. we gave him his heart and Yaqub, and each one of them, we made them Nabis. So not, you see the, uh, what Allah gave Nabi Ibrahim? So Nabi Ibrahim rejected them. He invited them to the guidance. He told them about the guidance. And then they wanted to threaten him. And he said, no, I'm still not going to follow you. He, he stood his ground. He was firm. He was constant. He was persistent. He stuck like glue to the guidance of Allah. He had solid demand. Allah says he was a Muslim who submitted. Right? And one of the rewards that Allah, Allah gave him lots of benefits. Rahma, Ni'ma, Baraka. But Allah gave him sons. Ishaq and Yaqub. And not Allah, first of all, in his old age, he could not get children. And Allah gave him two sons in his old age, Ishaq and Yaqub. In addition to that, Allah made them Nabis. So Allah made his family, immediate family, a family of Nabis. And Nabis are honorable people. They are the closest to Allah. Did we learn from them. We learn from the Quran how they loved. And we get also guidance from the way they loved and what they did. That is the way Allah teaches us in the Quran. So that is what happens when Allah talks about when we follow the Makame Ibrahim that we will get benefits in this world. Allah will provide for us something which we never expected beyond our expectation. Some benefits that Allah will give us will be valuable to us. Valuable, important to us. And in addition to that we will have Barakah mm -hmm. Nehmah in this world, Rahmah in this world and it will continue in the Akhirah. That is part of the Makame Ibrahim. Right, any mm -hmm. comments up to this, Serene? No. Zaida? Oh, Zaida is okay. okay. Let's keep us. Uh, no. I've got a question, Iqbal. Yeah. Um, you say that we must not follow our parents if they wrong. But if you grow up in a house, um, and that is what you've been taught. How do you know as a child that your parents are actually doing wrong? Okay, I know we will know because we 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 read Quran all the time. But well, you know, like other people that are within a household being taught this is how you do things. How do they know it's wrong? And we, we, need, we need to uh, seek knowledge. Allah said. Bokul Rabbi is in the Yalma, so we must seek knowledge. And the knowledge that we search for... Oh, what do you say? They, they, they still us. When we seek in the knowledge, that's when we will learn what is the shirk and what is not shirk. But most people don't, so... I mean, that is, you know, it, it's still bothers don't know, Then Allah will judge according to His wisdom, right? And He will hold them responsible according to the degree which they knew when they understood, but it is also our duty to give dawah. Yeah. Just spread the message, okay? Okay. Uh, Samira? No comment, Baba. Shireen? No comment, Baba, Shireen. Yeah, Shireen? No comment, Baba. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I have a, uh, just a comment on, on what uh, Zaida asked. Zaida, if you have that kind of situation, uh, we took it upon ourselves to go and and explain, and talk and and and, and talk and explain, 
and talk and explain and, and the, if the person doesn't want to listen then you have to leave the person and move on because if they continue in their, in their uh, sure. shirk and worshipping shaitan and doing all those funny things then uh, you can't be part of it. It's wrong. You know it's wrong. The Quran doesn't allow that. We're seeing now the millet of Ibrahim was not like that. So Allah Ta'ala tell us, follow Ibrahim. We have to follow the right path. No comments, Iqbal. So, Allah is telling us the other day. There is another ayah in the Quran where Allah says that uh, would you follow your ancestors if they didn't have guidance and they didn't have knowledge? So, when we're talking now about Makam and Ibrahim, that one of the things that we're saying here is that one of the ways to break away from being misguided or following that which is incorrect is where our ancestors or parents went wrong. If they went wrong and where they went wrong, by analyzing this verse about the guidance, and this is what the Quran is saying, etc. So you can understand now how deep it is the Makam Ibrahim. When we talk about Makam Ibrahim, what the Quran is teaching us about it. It is very deep. It goes very deep. If we look at these ayahs relating to Nabi Ibrahim and what should happen at the Hajj, and what should be taught, what we should learn, and what should... Remember also when people are coming back from the Hajj, they must carry that message of Makam Ibrahim back to their locality, to their area, to their country, to their people and spread it. That is what Nabi Ibrahim stood for. Okay, and then we look at Surah 14, verse 37. Yep. It says here that, uh, My Rabbi, I have settled some of my posterity in an uncultivated valley, your house, our Rabb, that they may establish the Salah, to so incline some hearts of men, human beings, so that they may yearn to, and provide thou with them first in order, in order that they may be grateful. So here the Nabi Ibrahim is making a dua. And he says he settled some of his family there near Makkah, near your house, at your house. So that one of the things they must do is establish the Salah. And as a result of that, Allah that gives them the benefits, the risk, enough to live a good, comfortable life, the requirements they need, risk, warzukuhum, so that they may be grateful. And if I look at 38, it says, our Rabb, Again, the dua continues. You know what we hide and what we proclaim. Nothing on the earth or in the heaven is hidden from Allah in the universe. Praise be to Allah who has given me in my old age Ismail and his heart. Surely, you are the listener of dua. Mm. My Rabb, make me to establish the Salah mm. and some of my austerity and accept the dua. Our Rabb, forgive me and my parents and the Mu'minin the, on the day, on the period of Isaf, accountability. You see? So he made this dua here. Yeah. So Nabi Ibrahim had feelings. Who did the Nabi Ibrahim make dua for? For his children and his parents. Children and his parents, yes. And the Mu'minin. Mm. And, and his progeny. Yeah, the Mu'minin. Uh, hey, my... Wali Wali there, yeah? Mm. Uh, just give me a few minutes, I'll be with you guys now. Just continue the discussion. Okay. Yeah, so so if, if uh, for me, uh, yeah, as I said, it, I wasn't too happy with it. Because, uh, you know, it's, the, the kids are not going to learn what we learned in Madrasa and stuff like that. But you've got to judge it and you've got to see how far you're going to take them. But what you said um, but just be careful and very really what they're teaching at the madrasa because we were brainwashed and taught very differently if we were taught how to understand the alphabets and everything well, like what we're learning now would have been much more easier to understand the Quran in that, mm. at an earlier age yes definitely but it's, never too late. it's never too late it would have been easier than okay yep okay what did Nabi Ibrahim make dua for it says that in the verse, it says, Rabbana Fili, Rabbana Fili, Wali Wali Deya, Walil Mu'minin. So his parents and the Mu'minin. But earlier it was his children. Yeah. And he's also saying here in 37. 37. Yeah. You must establish the Salah, you see? 
Yeah. Mm. I think mother is okay. So uh, 37 is saying that they must establish the salam. And one of the things the salam must do there at that at that house in Makkah. One of the things that the salah they must do, which is part of the Hajj, of course, must have the resources and arrange the resources and make available the resources so that people around the world have risk so that they don't suffer the consequences of hunger, starvation. And we know that millions and millions of people are going hungry and starving. Okay? Right. And then in 39, right, so we learned from Nabi Ibrahim that this is one of the things which should be done there. And Nabi Ibrahim made the dua there. Okay? Yeah. 39. I'm just focusing on what the Makam Ibrahim should be. He then uh, is grateful to Allah for providing him with the two sons and also making them Nabis. And then in 40, he makes dua to Allah, make me one of those who will establish the Salah. And some of the posterity will be those who have Iman and who are Muslim and who are genuine to do the same. 41, he asks Allah to give them the protection provided that they, for his parents, though his parents were rejected, but he wanted his parents to get the guidance mm. so that they can then after that be protected. Once you get the guidance, then you are protected. If you are a rejecter, deliberate rejecter, if you are a rejecter, then you won't get the guidance of Allah, the Rahmah of Allah, and then you will suffer the consequences in this world and the Akhirah. In addition to that, who will Nabi Ibrahim make dua for? The Mu'minin. Mm. Real Mu'minin. So we must make effort continuously make an effort on a daily basis to be of those who are mu'minin that when we die when we leave this world we die as mu'minin right but Nabi Ibrahim is also made dua for us yes yes because if we are one of the mu'minin then we are part of the family of Nabi Ibrahim and all the Nabis all the honorable Nabis they are honorable honored Nabis so Nabi Ibrahim made dua when we become mu'minin, we are part of his family now. We are part of the family of Nabi Ibrahim and Ishaq and all those honorable Nabis that Allah mentioned and all those that he doesn't mention that Allah is pleased with. We become of that one big family and we are in the favor of Allah, the rahmah of Allah and the satisfaction of Allah, the pleasure of Allah, the acceptance of Allah as Allah was accepted the honorable Nabi Ibrahim. Okay. So that is what now we're talking about when we're looking at the Makame Ibrahim. It encompasses all that. And then inshallah, when we continue with the next class, inshallah, I want to uh, quote from Rama Parvez, his translation, and then I want to comment on that. Because he gives a beautiful translation about Nabi Ibrahim. Very nice, well done. I love it. So I want to read from there. But for now, because we ran out of time, that is what we're talking about now the Makame Ibrahim. Also, we're going to consider that imagine Nabi Ibrahim was not selfish, he was unselfish. Mm. He was caring, he was compassionate. He cared for all the Mu'min. After him that came, and are still to come, we don't know how many millions or billions more are still to come. He looked ahead and he thought ahead. That is one of his qualities. Why does Allah quote his dua in the Quran? So that whatever Nabi, Ruham Nabi Ibrahim made will remain in the Quran till the end of time, till the end of the universe. Why did Allah put it in the Quran? What's the reason? Any comment? To give us hope. Yeah. And inspiration. And inspiration. Yeah. I think it, it's. Any other comment? Yeah, I think it's Allah Ta'ala is, is, is telling us look, I'm telling you, follow the millet of Ibrahim. And Ibrahim made dua for you. So how can you not follow the millet of Ibrahim? Follow the millet of Ibrahim because he's already made dua for you. Very good point. Yeah. Makes sense. Very, very good point. Any other reason why Allah put the duas? Look, Nabi Ibrahim made many more duas. We don't know. Allah knows that. But this specific Allah has put it in the Quran. Yeah. It's part of the Quran. Any other comments while Allah put it in uh, uh, So we can read it also. Sorry? So we can learn it and read it also and learn from it also. Yeah, good. We can learn from it. Okay, so if we analyze the dua, but 
our focus now is not really to analyze the dua. We're looking, at, but if we analyze the dua more deeply, it is what type of dua that Nabi Ibrahim is making. What is he making? And Nabi Ibrahim is looking ahead, future ahead. So one of the duas we can make learning from Nabi Ibrahim is that Allah must guide our posterity, our children, mm. our future generations to become mu'minin, to establish the Salah the way Nabi Ibrahim established it, and to establish the Hajj, the Makam Ibrahim, so that they can now also follow in the footsteps of Makam Ibrahim, Honorable Nabi Ibrahim. And we're talking about not footprints of Nabi Ibrahim. We are talking about following the footsteps of Nabi Ibrahim. That's what people should be following. Focus on the footsteps, not the footprints of Nabi Ibrahim. That's what we do here. And finally, if we put in the effort, and then it says here, yeah, Allah accepts the dua, but provided people make the effort and are genuinely looking for guidance. So we should all remember and realize that when we think of Nabi Ibrahim, what should come to mind? Anything, what should come to mind? Shanaz? That he made a dua for the mu'minin and he created the, the rule of salah, what salah is supposed to be. Create provision for people and bring people together and take care of people. Yes, good, good point. Sharin, when you think of Nabi Ibrahim, what would you think of? Um, Sharin? Yeah? Uh, that people, when they go on Hajj, then they should do what he did. It's it's for us to learn from what he done, and then do do the same when they go on Hajj, not the rituals. Okay, Zaida. Okay, Sabira. That uh, he eradicated shirk even when he stood alone, um, and that we should definitely follow in his footsteps. Yeah. Shirin? And that uh, we shouldn't feel despondent and alone when other people don't believe or listen to what we have to say and what Allah is saying from the Quran. We give them the word and what they follow after that, we won't be responsible for it. He still went on and he didn't nobody stop Nabi Ibrahim. He had complete yakin in Allah. Very good point. Uh, Yes, you got any comments? Nabi Ibrahim? Uh, I don't know. Gee. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Ibrahim alayhi salam, like he, he made dua for, you know, for, for the future generations, for his progeny. So, and whatever he did in his life, he, he, it was to, it was, it was to leave, you know, a legacy for future generation, not just his like uh, like a legacy, like a billionaire's legacy, but a legacy of well, mu'minin uh, or iman, people who will serve Allah, you know, by serving mankind like he did, and uh, uh, that's and that dua that Allah that that he made, Allah put in a Quran, that is what he wished for us to do, and for us to live for our future generations, you know, for, for our children and our children's children. Um, yeah, that is what, and Allah always, and Allah says, you know, this is, He says, you know, they say he was Ibrahim al-Islam, was he a Jew or a Christian? You know, He said, no, he was a Muslim. You know, he was of yeah. those who submitted yeah. to the words of Allah. And when you ask what is your deed, it is the millet of Ibrahim al-Islam. So, so yeah, he's he's the father. They say he's the father of religion. You know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. Good point. Okay. Okay. Nabi Ibrahim. Yes. What to say? They said it all. Mm -hmm. When you think of Ibrahim, you must think of Millet of Ibrahim and the dua that he's made. Those are the two most important things, I think. That uh, you've got to put in maximum effort when you make a dua, and Allah is uh, all hearing, and uh, your dua will be accepted. You don't do it just to say, uh, yeah, like AK says, lip service. You got to put in the effort, maximum effort. Okay. And Nabi Good Ibrahim, point. Okay. put in maximum yeah. effort. Okay. All right. So. Uh, some of the things that are very good, everyone, everyone heard it, everyone's points. Whatever everyone said, that fits in well with Nabi Ibrahim. So those are the points we've got to remember when we think of Nabi Ibrahim. But before
before we, we part for tonight, I just want to say certain things that really stand out for Nabi Ibrahim. His family, he had to turn against his whole family. He had to sacrifice his family. He had to go into exile. He had to move away. He had to leave everything that he owned, physical property, and he had to move for the sake of giving up shirk. That was his level of Iman, that I will compromise everything I own, my children, my family, my parents, my blood relations, my friends, my neighbors, people I grew up with, everything I will leave, but I will not be part of shirk. I will compromise everything, but I will never compromise my Iman in Allah. That's one of the things he did. And Allah rewarded him eternally. He is remembered and he will be remembered till the end of time. He will be remembered by the Jews, he will be remembered by the Christians, and he will be remembered by the Muslims. And a Muslim can be an average Muslim, a non-practicing Muslim, a Muslim that is not a mu'min, but the Muslim will remember Nabi Ibrahim. He will never ever be forgotten. That's how much honor Allah bestowed on Nabi Ibrahim. Just because he stuck to the guidance of Allah and he gave up the shirk. And the other thing that stands out, one of the things that stands out about Nabi Ibrahim, that he had to wait for kids in a very, very old age. He did not have kids. He had to operate alone and with the people that were with him. He had no children. And he asked Allah for children. And he never gave up on asking Allah for what he wanted. But which was right. He continued, he persisted, he made sabr, and Allah rewarded him eventually. Not only did Allah give him two sons to support him in his old age, but in addition to that, Allah made them Nabis. Even more honor on his family. So Allah gave tremendous honor to Nabi Ibrahim for his sacrifice, for his commitment. And finally, Allah told him, and Allah put his dua in the Quran by putting Nabi Ibrahim's story and his memories and what he stood for and for us to look up to their guidance and to put his dua in the Quran and to mention his history what part of his history and what he established how he established the Salah in the Quran means that all the mu'minin will always honor Nabi Ibrahim honored in this world when he was living he is honored while he departed from this world and Allah says in the Akhirah, one of the holy in, that is a tremendous honor that Allah bestowed on Nabi Ibrahim. Any final comments before we sign off? Shana? No, no comments. Uh, Sarin? No, no comments. Zaida? Um, no comment. Abena? Alhamdulillah, you highlighted Zubu Ibrahim salam beautifully. That's something I'll never forget now. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Irene? I'll explain the bar. Shukran, a lot of things I thought. Uh, we'll also appreciate Nabi Ibrahim much more than what we've been taught in the past. Shukran for that. Yes, sir. No, nothing, nothing more. Chizakla was very good, even though I wasn't in for long, but it was, it was very nice uh, being part of the Haka. Chizakla. Okay. Hey, nothing to add, Iqbal. MashaAllah. Shukran. Excellent uh, explanation, Iqbal. Okay. So, finally, the message for tonight that must stand out is, if we stick to Allah, Allah will give us honor in the world. And Allah will give us honor in the Akhirah. And He will join us in the Holy Game. And He will join us. Sorry, I'm a bit emotional. Mm. Yeah. I was going to say emotional. he's bringing tears. Why? It is very emotional, this thing. Shall I Allah will join us? We're going to be. Amen. Allah, the teacher, that's Salam al-Insana, ma'alam, ya'alam.
وعليكم السلام بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فيه آيات بينات مقام إبراهيم ومن دخله كان آمنا ولله على الناس حج البيت من استطاع إليه سبيلا ومن كفر فإن الله عني عن العالمين صدق الله العظيم